Hey everybody, Brent Johnson here with Heartfield Automation. This week I'm going to begin a new series on how we go about putting together a SuperTrack simulation. As you recall, the SuperTrack is a product that BNR has partnered up with a company called ATS on. It's a linear transport system. You have independent carts that have the permanent magnets in it and the track system that has the embedded coils in it. We have high precision control over everything in this system and being able to put together a simulation is going to really help you dial in how many carts, how many segments you need for your next automation project. Let's hop into it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we got to get the download the package that we use for this training. If you've never done this, you have to get a login name and log in as your as your username with your password. You have to go to your local BNR office to get this information. Next, you can go over to the academy, and this academy is really a really good tool as well. It will give you a lot of great examples on how we go about doing different stuff. But what we do is you click on Academy, then you go to Virtual Classroom, and then we're going to do BNR Tutorial Portal. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And then we're going to do Transport Systems, and I'm going to click on Super Track System right here. Right here is where you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna click on this zip file right here and it's gonna download all the software that you need. So I'm gonna click on it here. And as you can see, it's downloading onto my computer right now. Okay, once we've downloaded it, we wanna to go to our downloads and you're gonna see it's right here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and, and unzip it right here. So go ahead and hit extract all and I'll just extract it right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go and open it up. The first thing you have to do is go into programs. You have to download each one of these. You need to download the scene viewer and you need to download the track master and get those on your computer. Once you have that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up the Sims. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new folder that we're going to, you need to put on your C drive. So go over to your C drive and make, and then go down to temp. Open that up, and then you're going to have to create two folders. The first one's going to be Super Track User, and that's the capital S U P E R, capital T R A K, capital U S E R. And then inside that folder, you're going to want to create another folder called Super Track Startup Tutorial, and it's all case sensitive. It have you have to put it all with a capital S for Super, capital T for Track, capital S for Startup, and a capital T for Tutorial. That is, it's very important that you do these steps in that temp folder. This is going to, the track master is going to automatically load files into this folder. And this is how it's going to be able to do the simulation. If you don't do it this way, you're going to run into problems. Okay, let's go back to our downloads folder that we downloaded the super track tutorial package and where we unzipped it. Go ahead and go to the unzipped folder and double click on it. Then we're going to go to Sim Structure, the Sim Structure folder. Double click on that. Go down to the AR000 loader. Double click on that. And you're going to see a little traffic light that's going to pop up in the bottom right of your computer. It's going to go from red to yellow to green. Once it's green, we can go ahead and open up the Track Master. So double click on the Track Master software that you installed on your computer earlier. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click Add. And we're going to type in the IP address of this simulated controller. It's 127.0.0.1. Hit OK. Then click on New System and hit Connect. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up uh, the Super Track layout. So I made a little document here that shows a layout. We're going to be having an APC. 900 that's the controller that we use for super tracks and if you were facing the track from the controller you're going to have a right node and a left node this is all how all layouts work for super tracks no matter how long they are so first we'll go from the apc 910 to the right node which is segments one two and three and on the left node you're going to have segments six five and four so let's go to our to the Trackmaster software, go to advance, hit the plus sign, and hit system layout. And let's do the right network. Well, let's name the system first. My first 
super track. We're going to keep it as the layout as a loop. We're going to have the head section as number one. Palette flow is going to go to the right. We're going to go ahead and enable the control. We're going to do the drop down and click on track master. We're going to keep it at 800 microseconds and we're going to keep the encoder mode as standard. Go ahead and hit a pen three times. And then as you can see on our on our little diagram here, segment one and two are straight, but three is curved. So we want to double click on or click the drop down for three and turn that into a curved 180 degree one meter. Then we'll go over to our left network. We're going to hit append and then we're going to do insert insert. The reason I did that is we always start from the closest segment to our controller and then we move on. So from here, it's going to be six, five and four. So here I'm going to change, since six is a curved segment, I'm going to change this from a straight to a curved. So curved 180 degree. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit save and reset. Notice that this pops up. This is going to create a bunch of those files and it's going to put them into that temporary folder structure that we created earlier. Hit OK, then hit yes. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is come down to the simulation configuration. If we're, we were on a real super trap, we, track, we would not have to worry about this. But since this is a simulated environment, we have to tell the system where these pallets are going to start off. So we'll go back to our document and let's click, scroll down here. And we're going to look at this little dot where I put the starting points for each shuttle. So shuttle one is going to be on segment one at 100 millimeters. Shuttle two is going to be at segment one at 300 millimeters. And shuttle three is going to be on segment one at 500 millimeters. How everything is, everything goes from left to right if you're facing the track. So left is going to be the smaller number, zero, and the higher number is at 1,000. As you can see here, the shuttle length is 152 millimeters from left to right. The straight track length is a thousand millimeters from left to right and the curved track length is 1030 millimeters circumference so let's go ahead and put these into our into our track master software so for the first palette we're going to do section one and we're going to do 100 millimeters for the second palette we're going to do section one at 300 For the third, we're going to do segment one at 500. For the fourth, we're going to do segment four at 100. For the fifth, we're going to do segment four at 300. And for the sixth, we're going to do segment four at 500. Now, as you can see, we can add a bunch more pallets if we wanted to, but if we're, we're all, for this demonstration, we're only going to do six pallets. So go ahead and hit enter, then hit save. Now you'll see this pop up. It's going to make some new files for section parameters, encoder configuration, simulation configuration. Go ahead and hit OK. And then whenever you add or take out pallets, you always have to restart the system. So go up to setup and hit reset controller. Go ahead and hit yes. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and actually put, we're gonna go and we're gonna put our target points. A target point is where we want the shuttles to stop. We're not gonna do any offsets for this. So basically the shuttle will stop wherever we program it in the dead center of that pallet. pallet. So as we go back up here, you'll see that these are 152 millimeters long. If I put a target at 100 millimeters, it's going to stop right dead center on the 100 millimeter mark. You'll have half of this shuttle will be on this side and you'll have half of this shuttle on the other side. So let's go back down to our diagram here. So our first target is going to be in segment one at 500 millimeters. So let's go to global parameters, click on targets, click on section and type that as one and then position 500. Go to the next one. We're going to be in segment two at 900 millimeters. Two. 
900. Let's go to the next one. Segment three, we're going to be at 515. That is the apex of the curved segment. So segment three, 515. Whoops. Our fourth target is going to be in segment four at 500. Our fifth target is going to be in segment five at 800. And our last target is going to be on the sixth segment, the curved, at 515. Go ahead and hit enter, then hit save. And then you'll see this pop up. It has targets checked. Leave that checked. Hit OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to put together our move configurations. Click on that tab. All right, let's go to our first move configuration and double click on it. And then we're going to say move to target two. We're going to move to the right. We're going to move from target one to target two. So we're going to put check this little dot, dot, dot here for moving to the right. Check to target and then make this two. Hit hold OK. Then we'll go from two to three. So move to target three to the right, and then we'll go to three, hit OK. Move to target four. All right, so now it's just going to keep moving from target two to three to four to five to six back to one. Go ahead and hit save. And then the only thing you should see checked is move configurations, hit OK. Then we can go back to targets. And now we're going to do auto release for each target. So let's just go to the first target. We'll do one, two, three, four, five and six, then we're gonna do hold times for each target. So for target one, we wanna have the stop time at a thousand milliseconds. For target two, we're gonna do 300 milliseconds. For target three, we're gonna do 300 milliseconds. For target four, I have 500 milliseconds. For target five, 500 milliseconds. And for target six, we have 500 milliseconds. Go ahead and hit enter, then hit save. And then go ahead and hit okay. So we're all set. We, we actually have everything programmed now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up scene viewer. So let's go back to our download folder get back up to the scene viewer folder, double click on it and click on the scene viewer visualization. This is a piece of software that you have to download ahead of time and put it on your computer. Once you open up the visualization software, we're gonna go up to PVI and click on options. And then we're gonna just make sure that it's the right IP address, which it is 127.0.0.1. The task name is st underscore visu. The variable name is data. The size is 3072 and a refresh rate of two milliseconds. Go ahead, ahead and hit OK. Then go back up to PVI and hit Start PVI. As you can see, our track system is here. I'm going to kind of increase the size and move it over a little bit. You can use these arrows here to do that. And then we're going to go back to the Track Master software and we're going to go up to System Status Control. And then what we can do is we can click this green button, Enable Zone. And as you can see, the pallets are going to start moving through here. And you'll see they kind of start populating moving. We can go back to the software and we can actually see our pallets moving around our system exactly how we programmed it. You can take a look at it from a top view. 
You can take a look at it from a side view. I'm just moving it over so it's more in view here. And you can take a look at it from the bottom view and so on and so forth. But this is a super powerful tool that can be used to simulate your super track system. And not only is it a simulation, it's actually your real program and you can actually go and put this on a physical super track and it will run exactly like this. All right, everyone, that's all I'm gonna go over this week. Next week, I hope you tune in as we continue down this path of making a simulation you, with the, on the super track system. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. And if you really like these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. I've got a lot of other great content related to our automation products. I hope you have a great week and please stay safe.